Now, if in uh, if nature did not have any kind of motion that was constant acceleration, everything that we have done so far would be completely useless. But it is not useless because nature actually has lots of motions, many different kinds of situations um, can be described well by assuming that the object moves with constant acceleration. So the most important one, perhaps, is projectile motion. This is the motion of an object that you throw in the air. So this is the kind of motion that uh, any object would have when only gravity, when only the attraction due to Earth is what is uh, determining the motion of the object. So in this case, and you would want to set up the axis x and y, the y perpendicular to the surface of the Earth, the x tangent to the surface of the Earth. If you choose those axes that way, then the acceleration of any object, and this was uh, proposed by Galileo more than 300 years ago, the acceleration of any object that you toss in the air is constant with an x component that is zero and a y component that is minus 9.8 meters per second square. Now since in projectile motion we're running this number constantly, uh, we prefer to just give it a letter so that we don't have to write 9.8 all the time. So we call G the shortcut for 9.8 meters per second square. So the acceleration of an object due to the action of gravity alone is minus 9.8 meters per second square downwards. The minus means it is downwards. So we can write it in vector notation as A, the acceleration is minus G in times the unitary vector J. This, of course, is assuming that there is no air resistance. A piece of paper dropped in the air would obviously not accelerate with 9.8 meters per second square because the effect of air could not be neglected in that case. Very important to remember for projectile motion is the fact that the acceleration in the x direction is zero. This simplifies the solution of the problem. Now, knowing that uh, the acceleration of, the, of an object tossed in the air is like this, how do we figure out the trajectory? That is, how do we figure out the position, the vertical position, as a function of the horizontal location of the object? That's what we call the trajectory, y, as a function of x. To do that, we're going to need to specify some initial values. We would want to specify the initial location of the object and also specify what is the initial velocity of the object. That uh, velocity you can specify by saying what's the initial magnitude of that vector and also what's the angle the initial angle that the vector velocity is making with, say, the x-axis. Alternatively, you could specify the two components of the initial velocity, the x and the y component of the initial velocity. So this object, so far we know that because the acceleration in the x direction is zero, which tells you that the change in position is given by the velocity in the x direction times delta t. For the y component, we know that it's going to be uniformly accelerated motion because the object moves with constant acceleration equal to minus g. So one equation that tells you the y component of the velocity, how it changes with time, will be this one. Let's call that one second equation. We have the equation that tells us the change in position, vertical position of the projectile as a function of time, just as before. And the third equation that gives us velocity um, at the final velocity y component in terms of the initial and the displacement in the vertical direction. So with these equations, again, what we're looking for is the trajectory. What is y as a function of x? First step would be to solve for delta t in equation number one. So delta t is delta x divided by vx. Now if you take that value of delta t, 
and you replace it here and there, you can write an equation for delta y as a function of delta x. It's called that, well, that's replacing in the third equation, and you get this. Wherever you had delta t in the third equation, we have replaced delta x divided by bx. So now we're almost there. We can uh, simplify things uh, further by uh, replacing the initial value of the y component of the velocity is simply, as you can see in the triangle there with the angle theta. Vy initial is V initial times the sine of theta and Vx initial is Vi cosine theta. So if you replace that for Vy initial and Vx in this equation you get the first term turns into that and the second term turns into that. You can cancel Vi and sine theta divided by cosine theta, you can write it as tangent theta. So the equation is looking delta y equals tangent theta times delta x minus g over 2 vi squared cosine squared of theta times delta x squared. So this is the equation that relates displacement in the vertical direction with displacement in the horizontal direction. So if you throw a ball in the air, and let's say that uh, you start the ball, the initial location of the ball is at the origin, of the system of coordinates, then you would say that the initial position is zero, x and y. Say that you throw the ball with an initial velocity vector like that, making an angle theta with the horizontal. The equation that describes the trajectory of the ball is what we wrote before, except that now you can get rid of the delta symbol, because that delta means the final location minus the initial, but the initial is zero, so we can omit that. This equation is a parabola, as you know, since y is a function of the second power of x. Okay, so before we uh, practice, we do an example with projectile motion. Let me show you a video that's kind of fun. Everybody Everybody live. There we go. We're going to default to your right. Clearly, there's nothing else to do around oh that time. Oh my god! Coming right for us! <laughs> Here it comes! amazing what people would do in small towns to entertain themselves. Okay, from this video, uh, I measured the amount of time that the car was in the air. So that was 1.4 seconds that the car was uh, in the air. So with that number, the first calculation that uh, we're going to do, that I'm going to show you, is the height of the cliff. Okay, that's, uh, that's the first thing that we're going to do. And then the second thing is that I'm going to tell you that the velocity of the car is about 20 meters per second. It seems like a reasonable number. And with that number, I want you to calculate the distance from the bottom of the cliff at which the car lands. So that's going to be something for you to answer in our space. So let me show you the first calculation. So let's start by sketching the situation. So the first thing you want to do is the cliff and the car and sketch the trajectory of the car which is parabola of course and the distance from the cliff at which the car lands is going to be uh, delta x the height of the cliff we don't know so that is what we want to find out what kind of information do we have? Well, we have information about the time of flight, which was 1.4 seconds. And as I said, for the distance, I'm going to uh, let you use that the initial velocity of the car is 20 meters per second. Okay, so let's tackle the first problem, which is 
how much is the height of the cliff? So what can we do with that? Well, the first piece of information that we have is 1.4 seconds while the car was in the air. The um, motion of the car in the vertical direction is uniformly accelerated. So you can start thinking about what equations for uniformly accelerated motion involve time and involve distance. First one that should come to mind is delta y equals vy initial times delta t minus one half of g because the acceleration is minus g so minus in the y direction so minus one half of g times delta t square the velocity of the car not is that if the cliff the top of the cliff is flat then the initial velocity of the car is completely horizontal it's a vector that points along the x axis so that tells you that the initial vertical component of the velocity is going to be zero so your equation for the displacement along the vertical axis is minus one half of g delta t square now what's delta y? Well, delta y is going to be the final location, the vertical direction, minus the initial location. What is the final loca location um, on the uh, y-axis? Well, we haven't set up our axis, which should have been the first thing that we do. So let's say that this is x, and this is y, and this is the origin, right? This is x equals 0, y equals 0. So your final y is going to be 0 because the car ends up on the ground. So that is 0. Your initial is going to be h. So your delta y then is minus h. Right? So the equation that we have here, then we can replace it with this side is minus h and in this side we have 9.8 and delta t is 1.4 so that's going to be minus 9.8 meters per second square divided by 2 that was minus g over 2 and multiplied by the time which is 1.4 seconds square so 1.4 square is very close to 2 so this 2 with that 2 is going to cancel so finally the answer the minus with a minus of course and the answer then is that the height of the cliff should be about 9.8 meters so roughly 10 meters that's how high was that cliff this is our first answer then the second question that we have is how far from the cliff the car landed the delta x so how can we do that how do we solve that well, give it, notice that the time, the whole time that the car has been traveling from this point to the crash point, that is the time of flight, which we estimated to be 1.4 seconds. During that time, the car has been moving in the x direction, the car has been moving in that direction, with constant velocity of 20 meters per second, because the x component of the velocity does not change at all it remains constant so if you have the velocity and you have the time you can find what's the distance travel just calculate this and type your answer in our space